Rose McCarthy and I were studying the residual comprehension skills of a patient who'd suffered a major left hemisphere stroke. This is the patient who we were able to uh, demonstrate by using word picture matching tests that her knowledge of uh, objects uh, was more impaired than her knowledge of animals and flowers. But there was another uh, interesting, very interesting aspect um, of uh, this patient. Uh, when we were trying to uh, film, uh, make a record of this, we noticed that the first time she made a response, say there were three objects on the table, point to the cup, point to the glass, point to the pen, uh, she would get the first one right and then fall apart. And the question was, how long a gap did you have to leave before something became the first object? And what we did was we used one of the standard uh, word picture matching tests and we did it, simply did it at two speeds. Um, firstly, we did it at a natural normal speed. Once she'd uh, picked out a picture, we turned the page and she had to pick out another. But in the other condition, and it was Ros herself who uh, did this, um, a heroic uh, experiment, uh, we actually sat and looked at, uh, at her, or she sat and looked at her, for 30 seconds before turning the page. So we gave her a 30 second rest before she had to pick out the next uh, item. And this, uh, in doing this, it doubled her score. So she was clearly uh, very sensitive to temporal factors. And we uh, described this in terms of the system being refractory, uh, that um, for a certain period of time, uh, the uh, appropriate response was unavailable. So it was this unavailability of the correct response uh, for a period of time uh, that uh, we uh, thought was uh, a very interesting uh, observation, and we uh, carried on uh, investigating uh, this patient, and we were able to show um, that uh, she was very sensitive to semantic uh, similarity, but she was not the least bit sensitive to phonemic uh, similarity. Um, so we were clearly dealing with a deficit in accessing uh, items at a uh, <coughs> semantic meaningful, meaningful level. And uh, since that case, uh, Ros and I worked with uh, another case uh, a few years uh, later. And uh, more recently, uh, Sebastian Crutch, who I'm working with at the moment, uh, and I have been studying uh, a patient uh, with uh, this condition and trying to exploit uh, the, uh, if you like, the semantic uh, distance effects. <laughs>